Okay, I guess we can hear it. Maybe you can ask. Do you hear us? Hello? I can hear you. Hello? Maybe Hello? Ask, hear us? ask someone to say something. Could you Hello. say something? If you can, Hello? You can check. Oh, hello, Marco. Zdravo, team welcome partners. How are you? Thank you for asking. Perfect. Hi. Hello. Okay, hello, everyone. Do you hear me? It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. I, I can hear everything. It's for me it's fine. It's working. Okay, so uh, I would like to welcome everyone on this our final meeting uh, devote in the framework of the Think Balkans project financed by the National Sugar Fund. Our today meeting is devoted to regional cooperation and the EU accession process. Um, and our discussion today will be based on the two papers which were written in the framework of, uh, uh, of our Think Balkans uh, project. During the implementation of the project, we do hope that we will have opportunity to meet in person and to organize in person conference. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we are still online, but um, thanks for that, we can have part participants uh, from all over the countries. Um, I would like to apologize that my head of department is not here, but he has some family emergency. So that's why I would like to ask uh, Marko Toshanowski, the president of the Institute for Democracy, Sociedad Civilis, to welcome all of you online. Thank you. Okay. Is my mic on? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marta. Thank, uh, thank you, all uh, the participants in this, uh, in Davier so far the think balkans uh, project uh, as you rightly mentioned supported and initiated by the by the visegrad fund uh, uh, by the international visegrad fund on behalf of the institute for democracy as the coordinator of this of this project i would like to welcome to welcome you under today's uh, last event envisaged with, within this uh, this pilot uh, phase uh, the idea for those of you that were not involved until now in our activities, the idea of the pilot phase was in a way to build upon the experience of the and the success of Think Visegrad and to establish a similar mechani mechanism of cooperation between the Think Balkans, uh, the Think Tanks in the Western Balkan, so the Think Tank community there and the ministries of, of foreign affairs, as it was in the case of, uh, of, Think, of, Think, uh, of Think Visegrad. Um, so, uh, as it is very well uh, known uh, to, do, uh, to all of you, regional cooperation, building and negotiating joint strategic uh, interests and positions, creating in a way a regional story is in the core of this, uh, uh, this idea, but it was not that easy, putting aside the corona imposed restriction, it was not that easy to tell this story uh, in the Western Balkans from the beginning. It was mainly because uh, in our uh, uh, case, the approach was vice versa. It was bottom up, bottom up. The think tank community approached the MFAs for this type of, uh, of uh, mechanism, although the idea was, uh, was uh, in a way uh, uh, cooking uh, all the time around all the discussions and cooperations uh, we had uh, in, in the meantime. So, uh, but in, anyway, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, there are many regional ongoing processes currently in the Western Balkan. Uh, regional cooperation is becoming more complex and more dy dynamic. The Berlin process, the Open Balkan Initiative, where some of the, uh, of the parties, the countries are involved, and so forth and so on. 
but regional cooperation between think tanks, particularly, and uh, state actors, MFA's Ministers of Foreign Affairs in this case, was in, in, in a way a novelty, uh, is, is still a novelty in a way. So the trust building process is ongoing. We hope that with uh, this pilot project, we reached a point and we achieved a certain level of trust uh, building uh, uh, or trust between us and the MFAs. And here, I would like primarily to thank the contact points from the MFAs that were involved in this project, but also the experience from our partners from the Think Visegrad uh, group that are also uh, were very helpful and genuinely committed uh, to this uh, to this idea uh, to be to be successful uh, in a way. Uh, I think that with with time the the MFAs understood the the benefits of uh, negotiating common and joint position together and using the expertise of the think tank uh, community in the same time, all for the benefits of uh, of the region, uh, of course. Uh, so I think that now we are in a stage where actually there is a high level of confidence and awareness and knowledge how this mechanism functions actually, so that we can go to the next stage of this cooperation, meaning to have a formal endorsement and to formally institutionalize this mechanism within the cooperations of the MFAs, primarily within the Western Balkan uh, fund uh, uh, structures, but also other supporters here are welcome. I'm glad to inform you that we did sign yesterday officially a memorandum between the Think Tank core members of Think Balkans, and that now we are expecting in a very soon, uh, in a very short period of time that MFAs will follow with uh, letter, uh, letters of support, which one individual is supporting this mechanism so that we can uh, continue in the next uh, stage, as I said. Uh, we will have here also uh, additional members of the Think, uh, uh, think Tank Consortium, uh, members for Think Tanks proposed by the respective MFAs of Western Balkan, but also we will be very glad if other members of the Visegrad, of Think Visegrad uh, that were not part of this pilot phase also jump up on board and uh, together in a collaborative uh, effort uh, have more uh, fruitful uh, exchange of policy papers, uh, civil servants and the researchers. In a way, uh, I think it will inevitably help the prospects of regional cooperation of Western Balkan, but also it will, it will, it will produce uh, better relations. It will enhance the collaboration between the two regions of Western Balkan and the, and the Visegrad region. This very event is actually part of this endeavor. We are promoting the final policy products uh, here that were uh, created by, uh, by, by the uh, Think Balkans uh, uh, members. So I would like, without further ado, to, to uh, give the floor to other, to other participants that are ready to, to, uh, to share what they wrote and what, what, what are the findings with, with us. And I really do hope that we are continuing in the next year and the next years in a more institutional and formalized way to, to, per, to pursue the cooperation uh, between us. Thanks one again, once again to the Inter International Visegrad Fund. For, uh, for this vision, for sharing it, for supporting it. And I think that the regional ownership of Western Balkan is now crucial for the Think Balkans mechanism to continue and be sustainable in the years to come. Thank you very much to all of you and I wish you a great success. Thank you very much, Marco, for your uh, introduction. As you said, during Think Bal uh, in the framework of Think uh, Balkan project, uh, we, uh, together, like experts from the Western Balkans, uh, experts from Visegrad uh, countries, prepare seven policy papers, four short one and three long one. The short one, the topic of the short one, was chosen by us. It was our proposal to the to the MFA. Uh, in, uh, papers were devoted to the subject which. We think that are really important for the for the region. One was about the reconciliation. Uh, one was about the new methodology, 
and you can all you can find all the uh, all the papers on the project website of Institute uh, for Democracy Societas Civilis. And now today we met to discuss two long papers, the topic of which were chosen by the MFA. So it was the MFA together, it was uh, quite <coughs> achievement of us during the project that MFA decided what kind of uh, subjects are most important for, uh, for them. So first of all, one was uh, new methodology for accession negotiation. It is a subject which is crucial for the Western Balkans, but also for us in the Visegrad uh, countries, which we always support the, uh, the EU enlargement process and quick integration of Western Balkan countries into the EU. And the second one is devoted to regional cooperation uh, in the Western Balkans. So it's also the subject which uh, MFA are uh, really interested uh, in. So I would like to pass the floor to my colleagues, uh, Zora Necher, the head of Center for EU Integration in Institute for Democracy of Societas Civilis to present the outcome of our publication. Thank you, Marta. Uh, yeah, first, um, uh, I would like to thank our host today, uh, the Center for Eastern Studies, so it's from, uh, from Warsaw. Uh, really glad to be in, in back in Poland after co-organizing a think tank forum as part of the uh, Berlin process. Uh, we are gathered today again to promote a regional uh, uh, paper. So, uh, as Marta already mentioned, as the Western Balkan uh, Ministers of Foreign Affairs gathered and decided which are going to be the topics on which the think tanks will write, the same approach is being applied on the side of the on the side of the think tanks. And actually, there is uh, the way we have we have written and drafted these papers. Uh, the one on, on the new methodology and, uh, and its impact, and also the, 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 the one on the regional organization, which will be presented by Nejma uh, following me, uh, has a lead author. <coughs> and also, uh, depending on which country it comes, there are also co-authors from each of, the, uh, each of the other Western Balkan uh, partners. So, uh, so here I can mention the lead author on, on the new methodology paper and its, its impact on the EU accession process. Uh, the lead author was Dragan Thiele, uh, which is an uh, external associate of the Institute. Uh, it, it, this paper has been co-written uh, with uh, Vladimir Mejak, Alba Cela, uh, Doni Kaimini, uh, Nezma Tajanovic, uh, Nikola Mumin e Altim Geta. So all these people, all these authors contributed to the paper that we are going to present uh, today. So this preserving this uh, regional approach towards writing the papers is also very important for us. So each uh, each author will have its own say in in, in writing the in writing the the paper. So that's about the technicalities when it comes to the when it comes to the paper. Uh, here we're talking about a very uh, technical technical paper. Uh, follow in the follow-up discussion, uh, there will be a discussion on this paper for the respective uh, respective parties. But I can just give the the over the the, the overview of uh, of the paper itself, uh, how we 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 saw the the new methodology, how did it come uh, to life. Who proposes it and how it how it is implemented uh, today? So uh, the paper starts with the with the visit of Emmanuel Macron to to, to Belgrade in 2019. Uh, there was a discussion with with uh, with uh, with the hosts in in Belgrade. Following the following the visit of Belgrade, uh, there was a, a there was a, a kind of a, a statement which went in line that we need to make, uh, that the European Union needs to make the whole accession process uh, more effective and efficient. Thus blocking the council <coughs> conclusions on, on North Macedonia and Albania for starting accession negotiation and uh, giving it to the European Commission to draft a new methodology based on which these two countries, these two countries will uh, start the accession process. 
Uh, afterwards, once the, 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 the methodology has been adopted, both uh, Serbia and uh, Montenegro has accepted uh, the, the terms of, of the new methodology, however, and we are going to see, it, it is very visible in this analysis, that most of the rules, as we are talking about changing the rules in the negotiation framework, which is a legal document, most of the rules could not be changed. Therefore, most of the rules remained as such, regardless of the acceptance of the, uh, of the new methodology. Uh, so uh, the commission came up with a proposal, uh, come up with a proposal uh, for a new methodology, which was accepted by uh, all member states in, and became the document uh, according to which the Western Balkans would integrate in the, in the, European, uh, in the European Union. Uh, there is a lot of, a lot of uh, talk inside the document about how processes are organized. I would not, I would not bother you with that. Uh, you can freely download the, download the paper and read because this is a, a document which is like 40 pages long. What I would like just to stress, there are two points. Uh, there are two points is first that uh, after the process being literally stopped in 2019, still today, 2022, we haven't seen much of its implementation. Actually, uh, in, if we take uh, aside uh, uh, two, three intergovernmental conferences with, the, with countries which are already negotiating, we haven't seen uh, implementation of this methodology in its full capacity, and that means for, for uh, North Macedonia and <coughs> Albania yet. So a couple of years afterwards, why I say that it's technically the process is stopped because we haven't <coughs> seen uh, the implementation. Uh, yes, one might, one might say it is because of the coupling or decoupling of these two states and the differences between um, the various member states in the European Union, but also what is important to mention is that uh, that one of the four elements based on which the new methodology lies, in foundations, is creating a political will. So the first element of the new methodology that wanted to create or to be implemented is to create a, a political will. Obviously, three, four years after the, after the new methodology, this kind of political will among the member states is still not created. Thus, the process, thus we cannot actually assess the implementation of, uh, of the new methodology for this uh, and many other things. Uh, you know, when you, when you stop a process and then you propose <laughs> new games of rules, the expectations is that once uh, once the, these new rules, according to your preferences, are being set up, that that country that initiates them will also feel a responsibility to see that happen. At least, you know, to, to champion with certain members, certain countries in the Western Balkans to champion the implementation of the new methodology. Actually, we haven't seen it. The, the, the last speech of, of President Macron is that we're going to organize a, another conference on the Western Balkan at the end of the French presidency. We will see how that will go. We still don't know what exactly that is going to entail. However, what we know actually is that it is not going to be an EU Western Balkan summit. This is the annual summit, uh, which is according to the new methodology. That one will happen during the, the next or the second uh, presidency uh, of this year. That's the, that's the Czech presidency. So. That is, that is the first thing that I would like to, uh, to point out. So political will, political commitment is key. And this has to be created. Actually, uh, actually, if one traces the behavior of, of the ones which are blocking the process now, uh, uh, the Bulgarians, then we can see that just follow up on, 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 the, on, on the French, on the French veto. Um, uh, dynamism is uh, another element that uh, I want to point out. Uh, this has been created with uh, promoting the actual cluster. So not more, we are not going to, well, we are still the chapters are there, but now they're, they're grouped in, uh, in uh, so-called so uh, uh, clusters. 
uh, in so-called cluster. So when you open one cluster, you actually open more chapters. So that should provide the dynamism, uh, the dynamism that the new methodology envisages. What is very important, having in, in regard that political will, political commitment is not created with this new methodology, uh, or we are still waiting to be created. There is one element which is very important that needs to be uh, needs to be uh, needs to be uh, emphasized, and that's well one is one single actual uh, sentence in the new methodology, and that's uh, the phasing in element. What does it mean phasing in level? Something that, yeah, something that French have promoted. So that's kind of a, on a Euro European level, just to, for the, for, to understand uh, how it works on a European level for our European uh, friends, that's kind of a differentiated integration. So regardless of where you stand in, uh, if you put that in the, in, in, in the context of the Western Balkan, regardless of where you are in the EU accession process, you can uh, phase in or you can gradually ac access certain EU policies. This is a single sentence in the new methodology. It can be found in the draft negotiation frameworks for both North Macedonia and, and Albania. But that is, that is it. There is no operationalization what the commission means by this, in which certain policies uh, the Western Balkans is expected to phase in. And also, I, I don't think, uh, well, we know that there is no discussion between the Commission and the Western Balkan uh, countries, what are actually their own preferences. Uh, what we can see from the policies uh, that are happening in, in the migration, it's obviously that, you know, security, it has been, uh, has been put forward by, by the European Union. We have signed, well, not, not all, all, all of the Western Balkan countries, but uh, some of them signed the status agreements uh, for, uh, with Frontex. That's pretty much uh, putting a sign of equivalence between a member state and a, and a candidate country from the Western Balkans. That uh, in, in, if there is a surge of, uh, of, of migrants or refugees, uh, on, our, on our borders, and we know that we are talking about here uh, the Western Balkan route um, on uh, on the request of the of the candidate country or by Frontex, they can be deployed uh, to protect our uh, uh, protect our our own border. So certain elements we can we can uh, predict at least from the side of EU, but still we haven't seen what this phasing in means uh, as an operationalization by the uh, by the uh, operationalization by the EU uh, yeah I'll, I'll be quicker uh, two more uh, two more points uh, two more points uh, one is on the uh, one is on the uh, capacity so there are many talks about the capacities of the western balkan countries uh, to conduct accession to conduct the accession process but also what we are lacking actually now discussion and uh, and we are seeing this more and more obvious is that on the side of the on the side of the commission especially dg <coughs> the capacities they have in their own uh, respective uh, uh, dgs to deal with to deal with the countries of the western balkan because this also uh, this also uh, influences the speed or the effectiveness and efficiency of, of the process and the fourth element uh, is reversibility. Uh, uh, for years, we have pushed for a qualified majority vote to, to accelerate uh, the process. What we got now is uh, reverse qualified majority uh, 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 voting. And uh, maybe one element which also goes, uh, especially it is important for North Macedonia, but I think now, but I think it will be an element of all the others, and that is uh, when we are talking about the when we are talking about uh, the corrective measures previously according to the old methodology and how it, it remained even under switching to the new methodology for Serbia and Montenegro in order to initiate a procedure for corrective measures you only needed uh, you, you, you needed the, the EU needed one third of the member states now according to the new methodology which will be fully applied to North Macedonia, Albania, and the rest, 
you only need a single member state. So if you have a problem with one out of the 27, and there will be always one which will be for regardless of whatever reasons will be not satisfied, and it doesn't have to be uh, for the you know technical issues, can be completely something else, political, but it can play the technical game, <clears throat> that can initiate corrective, corrective measures. And the whole procedure lasts around nine months. If one adds the holiday season, the Christmas and New Year's, then you can <laughs> then, then you yeah. can stop it for a year. So that's how you can effectively block another country without saying that bilaterally you want to, to, to prevent someone. We will hear uh, uh, the, other, the other authors discussing specific issues. I'll stop here and then if there is a need to elaborate uh, anything, uh, uh, I can do it afterwards. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And of course, we all feel we agree that uh, the methodology of enlightened policy uh, should have been changed, should be more, more dynamic, but, but I have also remembered that the best tools um, won't uh, replace the political will, and we have to start implementing this uh, methodology to be effective, like without that, you know, the, 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 the whole change is, uh, is pointless. Now we move uh, to the to another subject, which is regional cooperation, which was supposed to be complementary to another policy to help the, the countries in the region uh, to be prepared for sectoral policies the EU is uh, conducting. So I would like to ask uh, Ned Madermanovic, professor at Faculty of Political Science of University of Sarajevo and researcher at Committee in Action, to present uh, my thesis of the of the paper prepared by uh, six researchers from the Western Balkans. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, Warsaw. Sorry, we're calling. Um, <laughs> I give twelve points, Dupa, to uh, all of you who have made it to Warsaw. Unfortunately, I couldn't have made it. We have um, an exam week, and um, uh, we 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 actually go to the classrooms. We do it. Uh, alive and uh, it's under quite extraordinary measures so so it was not uh, possible to reschedule it and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry uh, but I'm very happy uh, that we have come to uh, this point to to present this paper and and, and to have it um, and um, I have to say uh, I have to share a personal note because two times uh, in my um, academic and researchers life uh, I had a, a tremendous luck to stumble upon a topic uh, that was uh, 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 um, about to become really hot. And, and first time it happened in 2014, I was working with a group of researchers on the issues of populism and we published an edited volume in 2016, right between uh, the Brexit vote and, and the Trump um, uh, election. So the, the, the volume was uh, very popular and, 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 and very interesting at the time, um, although the circumstances were not, uh, were not ideal. So the second time, um, it, it happened um, thanks to the Think Balkans uh, network. And uh, when we discussed the, the, the topics that we were going uh, uh, among ourselves, and that we were going to um, offer to our partners in, in the MFAs. We have come up with uh, extraordinary topics. Uh, and in the end, it turned out that we had uh, three uh, 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 wonderful uh, topics uh, that we were going to, to elaborate. One of them was the regional cooperation. Uh, but uh, as it happened uh, during the summer, the Open Balkans initiative was uh, launched. That was uh, something we, we were not aware of uh, that was going to happen. So uh, all of a sudden, everyone was talking uh, not only about the region or individual countries, but also about the quality and the value of uh, the regional cooperation. And, and all of a sudden, we were uh, everything was electrifying and, and we were all uh, very energized and very enthusiastic about uh, our work. Uh, second thing that I'm very uh, that I was very fortunate about uh, was the team itself, my extraordinary, I have to say, colleagues uh, and researchers who, who took part in, in this endeavor and um, alphabetically, not in any order of precedence, uh, Donica, Emini, 
uh, Ledion Krisafi, Ivan Nikolovski, and uh, Anna Maria Velinovska. Uh, thank you all so much for, for wonderful cooperation and, and wonderful work that, that you have done. I'm, I'm really happy to, to, um, um, to have had an opportunity to work with you and also to have this opportunity to uh, present it. And uh, we have enough research material to just uh, continue working as, as I hope we will do. Um, our work uh, on uh, the impact of regional cooperation was uh, based uh, and was um, inspired in a way by the major um, assumption that the regional cooperation makes the majority of diplomatic work for every country in the world, uh, as geography and nearness uh, remains one of the most important factors for every country. And all the common um, elements uh, 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 of regional diplomacy, uh, the drivers, but also the limiting factors uh, for cooperation, which are listed in, in the introduction of this paper, are also present and easy to identify in, in the Western Balkans. Um, the regional cooperation in our region uh, takes place uh, against the very specific background. Uh, of ethnic disputes and the violent breakup of former Yugoslavia. And that is relevant for most countries, not all of them. Albania is a um, uh, um, um, fortunate exception in, 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 that, uh, in that aspect. Um, also, the regional cooperation has been uh, generously supported by the European Union in many different segments, not only through the inspiration, but also through very generous funds. Um, and uh, closely related to the process of integration itself uh, through the stabilization and association process, which actually imposes um, um, uh, even legally the obligation to cooperate within, uh, within the region. So those are all factors that we have to take uh, into consideration. And those are all the factors uh, that have shaped uh, the regional cooperation so far. Uh, our specific aim was uh, to look um, into the ways and steps through which the cooperation and integration aspirations might be advanced uh, and their relevance sustained, um, especially uh, during the coronavirus pandemic and uh, the, the post-COVID uh, recovery that we, uh, that we expect. Uh, what was very special about this research is that our sources were actually the people who are uh, on everyday basis working on the regional cooperation. They are the ones who cooperate. Um, but due to the nature of uh, the diplomatic service and uh, in order to maintain um, their professional uh, distance, we had to maintain and promise the anonymity of our sources. So you cannot find the list of our interviews, although that was uh, available to our editorial board so we can uh, uh, assure the, 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 research, uh, the research ethics. Um, um, apart from that, uh, one of the most uh, difficult tasks, I think, um, and, and one of the most demanding aspects was actually uh, up to even, and that was just to provide us um, uh, with an overview of uh, most relevant regional organizations and initiatives, uh, and also to select the most relevant. So even if our research was only about to list these organizations, and even if, if it was only uh, about uh, the, the piece uh, that, that uh, even did, um, uh, it, it, would have been, uh, it would have been useful enough. Uh, other chapters that were uh, prepared by uh, the rest of us uh, include the findings related to the individual countries. Uh, so their particulars, uh, particular views on regional cooperation, the perceptions of uh, benefits and successes, uh, as well as legitimate issues regarding the regional context that each country sees differently. Um, uh, we include, of course, uh, uh, the view on, uh, on the Open Balkans Initiative, as that was uh, the, latest, the latest, uh issue to come up. Uh, another great contribution from Ivan, and please do not mind that, that I mention him um, uh, uh, so often, uh, was the overview of the regional cooperation in the times of the pandemics. Um, and also the priorities um, uh, 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 for the post-COVID uh, recovery. And this was quite an important uh, 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 aspect as it is often neglected in, in the public discourse of most of our countries. Uh, but it turns out to be very important, uh, both for citizens, but also for, uh, for the economies. 
Um, as I said, um, uh, this was envisaged as a long paper and it certainly turned out to be the long paper. Right. So uh, if you're not interested in all the particular details on, on, on every single country, then you can just uh, skip the entire uh, 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 skip the entire paper and, and go to the recommendations. And uh, the recommendations uh, are, of course, based on, on the findings of, uh, of the research, but they are also um, common and uh, applicable to all the countries. So they, they clearly identify um, uh, 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 the common um, and, and the compelling themes and the compelling issues for, uh, for the, entire, uh, the entire region. Um, it is worth saying that all the countries are not only declaratively, but uh, uh, I think very uh, genuinely interested in, in the regional cooperation, uh, but also the citizens uh, of, uh, of uh, our countries. So that is, uh, uh, we see that as, uh, as a value per se. Um, certainly there is uh, a lot to be done and, and that's what our recommendations um, sort of uh, um, um, shed the light on. Uh, more needs to be done when it comes to resolving the bilateral issues and building mutual trust as that is the foundation and the precondition for mutually beneficial relationships. Uh, the initiatives uh, uh, need to, to um, uh, be more uh, um, regionally uh, owned. And, and one of the ways is to uh, sort of strengthen uh, the, local, uh, the local funding, the funding that comes from, uh, from the region itself. Uh, each country needs to develop also uh, additional capacities um, or just regroup. Uh, the existing capacities uh, to service all the memberships and, and the rights and obligations that each country has in different regional organizations and, and initiatives. And uh, the role of uh, re respective MFAs in this is, is crucial as they have uh, uh, the political um, uh, the political overview of, um, of the trends in the region. Uh, also, an open dialogue uh, on uh, rationalization, the streamlining, uh, restructuring the number of uh, uh, um, the organizations and initiatives. And as I mentioned already, it was quite uh, a task to, to, to list all the organizations, uh, let alone to service uh, all the organizations as the countries in the region do. Uh, their work, transparency, visibility, and sometimes certain management issues also need to be uh, discussed uh, among the members. Um, I need to say that uh, we took the reconciliation and uh, cooperation and integration uh, as values per se, uh, and they remain uh, to be the, the, the of utmost importance, uh, not just uh, for the future of the region, but also for, for the post-pandemic uh, uh, recovery of, uh, of the region and all the improvements in this segment that may uh, uh, forge a new type of articulation and, and cooperation framework. Uh, and in the end, I will go back to the uh, Open Balkans Initiative, uh, which may have um, uh, um, divided the region as it appears to be the case now, uh, but its importance um, is, is not only um, uh, measured uh, 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 by the number of countries who, who take part in it, uh, but also uh, as it raises important issues for everyone and, and even the countries who remain outside of this um, initiative. What kind uh, of a region do we need to see, do, do we need to have, do we want to uh, develop, uh, what to do with the region uh, if the EU enlargement is not uh, soon to, to uh, 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 be option, if at all, um, and how to devise a meaningful cooperation uh, without a strong uh, support uh, from the outside, whether it is uh, the EU uh, itself, uh, or a more bilateral initiative such as uh, was the case with the Berlin process. Um, and that is um, an issue that each country, regardless um, of uh, 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 its uh, views over the Open Balkans or any other 
initiative in the region uh, needs to take into consideration and needs to provide an answer for uh, in the near future. And I hope that some of these recommendations uh, will be uh, uh, turn out, uh, will turn out to be as uh, a useful policy platform for for uh, the benefit. So once again, thank you for this uh, extraordinary um, opportunity, and to my co-authors, thank you very much for for um, cooperation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Najma, for your presentation uh, uh, of the policy paper devoted to the regional cooperation. And as I said, both Think Vishifat and Think Balkans is about enhancing the cooperation among the expert community from the different uh, Western Balkans countries uh, to somehow force us in the G4, but also in the, uh, in the Western Balkans to, to get to know each other, get to know the perspective, the national perspective on various issues, uh, to, to, to have this opportunity to discuss how uh, the experts from any country in the region uh, sees some horizontal problem and the common challenges which are ahead of the Western Balkans. So now, now I would like to ask uh, uh, our uh, friends from, uh, from other uh, Western Balkan countries to comment uh, on, the, on the, policy, uh, the policy paper which were presented. And uh, the, the I would like first uh, to invite for, the, uh, for commenting the Vladimir Mejak, uh, Vice President of the European Movement uh, in Serbia, who is one of the best experts on the emergent policy in the whole region, who knows the issue both from the practical side, but also from the academic and more policy, policy advising side. So, hello, Belgrade. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Marta. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to be with you, at least uh, virtually. I couldn't come for you know, COVID is really raging here in Serbia and it would be a difficult uh, difficult for me to leave the family back home alone. Uh, thank you for this. It was a very good uh, opportunity to actually talk to people who are dealing with the same issues uh, in, the, in the Balkans. And uh, it was very easy to, to, to agree on, on conclusions. Basically, when Zoran sent me the conclusions, I just said, yeah, yeah, that's it. This is what I would have said if somebody if somebody had asked me. Uh, from Serbia's point of view, as a country that was actually caught in the middle of the process, we were in the middle of the process when we got this new methodology. It was from the onset, it was, uh, it was uh, understood that it cannot be applied 100% to, to, to Serbia, and it was just evident that we must identify how and where it would be it would be applicable for us because we already had opened 18 chapters before the new new methodology was was adopted. Uh, European movement in Serbia was advocating for years that the previous way of running accession negotiations doesn't work, and uh, our main argument is that Montenegro is there for 10 years in negotiations. We are there for eight and we are nowhere near close finishing the process. And if the process start, runs for, let's say, 15, 20 years, it's not a process, it's life expectancy, basically. You cannot expect the process to, to be ran like that and then to say, well, uh, it's not the it's not the outcome that is important. It's the journey. But in this case, the journey became self self sufficient because nobody is talking about the outcome uh, itself. Uh, so for Serbia, it was very much evident that it would be partially applicable. Personally, I would be happy if what was written in the methodology would have been applied to the fullest possible extent to Serbia because that actually would make the difference. Uh, so far, uh, the implementation of the new methodology only made Serbia uh, do its job that was lagging behind for three to five years, but officially on paper, we did it. In substance, we didn't. And that was the biggest, biggest problem uh, of this new approach. It didn't uh, bring the new political will as Zoran uh, very, uh, rightly put it, this is the essence. The existence of political will on both sides to get the job done is important. And here you have a uh, lack of political will on the European side, even after the new methodology, it is more than, more than evident. And you have the lack of, I can speak for my country, 
I don't see the political will to finish all the necessary reforms that are necessary to join the EU. And in the methodology itself, it is written that it requires political will on the EU side and societal change on the accession country side. And I don't see I don't see this this existing. So after three years, uh, we can say that the main part is, is missing. Uh, what was missing from the beginning of uh, once the, uh, the, uh, initially from the methodology is the target, some target date. Uh, after so many years in this process, we need uh, something, some reasonable amount of time when we will say this is our target date, not uh, not a fixed date, just passing passage of time will not make you fit for membership, but this is the target date. And it was this is what was essentially missing from the beginning. And this is what we are advocating for last five years. We need some a certain date uh, that we have to aim for. Some, uh, some reforms cannot be done physically. They cannot be done without having, having the date. And I, for the first time a few days ago in the speech of uh, Manuel Macron in the European Parliament, I heard somebody mentioning reasonable perspective. So this is the novelty we'll see in June, how this will turn out, let's say. But uh, this is the first time somebody actually mentioned this. Before, when I would mention this, people would stop start talking to me like, no, 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 that's a, that's a bad word. We don't use the, the, the date word in, in Brussels. That's a big no-no. So this is the first time that somebody actually mentioned mentioned this. Uh, what uh, I also miss from the methodology, and we fully agree on this, I will probably be repetitive, is what phasing in means, how, when, and uh, who's going to pay for that. Uh, the, the most important uh, element of that is who's going to pay for that, because if we all have to apply European Green Deal, and we accepted that in Sofia in 2018, somebody has to pay for that. It doesn't come cheap. In Serbia, we calculated maybe 15 billion euros. That's 30% uh, of our GDP. Somebody and from somewhere this money has to come. And the 9 billion euros EU uh, devoted to uh, the Western Balkans is nowhere near enough to cover uh, expenses of the accession, even the part of the accession. And what is even more important, it's not even enough to fight off the third parties inter interested in the Western Balkans, which is the most important, okay, second most important after political will is to fight off third parties uh, existing in the Balkans. And I don't see that part. So you have to have political will and you have to have the money uh, accompanying it. Uh, what I actually see in the implementation of this, uh, this methodology so far, that uh, the focus that was supposed to be placed on the rule of law is not substantive. It's a box ticking exercise. Uh, we are going through the motions, but no emotions in those motions. So we are doing, uh, we are uh, adopting documents, but we all know that th those documents will not be implemented or will be uh, mimicking, will be mimicking implementation of those documents or we'll just prolong the time until the full implementation of the document. So this is the part what is missing. And one part that I really liked in the methodology is when the methodology said that there will be clearer reporting, less diplomatic, much more understandable for common citizens. And then the commission did quite the opposite. So not that they are made them clearer, they even made them more, how to say, diluted. So you cannot actually, if you don't know what to look for and where to find it in the, I don't know, footnote on the page 68, uh, something that is very important and that actually is uh, 1.1 billion euros of value, uh, then it's very difficult to find actually what you are looking for. And then to, this, to explain that to citizens, it, it's uh, again uh, uh, an impossible, impossible, uh, impossible exercise. <laughs> so uh, to cut the short story short, I would really like to see things uh, written in the in the methodology being implemented and i would really like to see the phasing in and at least some clear perspective really clear perspective i'm 45 i hope i will will not be participating in this this kind of meetings uh, when we are retired and uh, we would i would really like to see that and i think that the time now is right now geopolitics is there unfortunately geopolitics does not uh, Am I cut off? Hmm. Do you hear me? Okay. 
Uh, yeah. So yeah. Geopolitics is there. EU has to think geopolitical, but geopolitics does not uh, that does not suffer values, unfortunately. And this is something that you will have to bear in mind because they cannot have geopolitical uh, in 21st century geopolitical enlargement without monitoring the values, particularly the rule of law. Because once we join the new country without the rule of law is going to taint EU itself. So we have this conflicting conflicting interests. They cannot let us in until we have the rule of law and we cannot have the rule of law until EU actually pressures the local governments to do so. So we are in a vicious circle that we can only cut. Uh, EU is the only one that can actually cut this vicious circle. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, uh, Vladimir, for your insightful comments. And yeah, we have, like, we all here agree that we have to have emotion in yeah. the and you know, and clear political commitment from, from the EU side, uh, because we usually spoke about the enlargement, uh, enlargement uh, fatigue from, uh, from the EU side, but you know, in these times, like, yeah, when geopolitics is, is back, it's really important to, uh, to have really active EU in the Western Balkans, because, you know, there is no vacuum in international relation, in the, is, is there vacuum, if, the, the victim is there, it is easy built by the other third actors. And I think, you know, it is the European background. We always um, underline this, that, that Western Balkans, it's in the middle of the EU. It's not the backyard, it's not neighborhood, it's the part of Europe, which is surrounded by the EU, EU member state. And that's why it is so important for you to be active, to be there and you know, to, 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 to have this final you know, uh, motion in, the, in this process. And now we are going back to Warsaw and I would like to ask Dominika Emini, Executive Director of Civitas Platform and the member of Balkan in Europe uh, Policy Advisory Group for comments and, yeah, and additional insights about the, the paper you have wrote. Uh, thanks a lot, Marta. Glad to be here, of course. Uh, we are the lucky ones who actually made it. Uh, some waiting in Istanbul uh, for hours to actually uh, uh, come all the way to, uh, to Warsaw. I'm um, happy to be here, but also happy to have had this opportunity to contribute in both papers, actually. And uh, both topics are equally complex for the case of Kosovo specifically. A lot has been said on, on, on the enlargement a uh, new and all large methodology from the holistic approach, but also the case of, of Serbia, uh, the case of Kosovo and the new methodology discussion and debate is uh, even more complex, let's say. Um, first of all, uh, the debate in Kosovo did not hardly took place. Uh, I mean, it was very easy for us to write about the topic of work as researchers be because we more or less all agree on the fact that new methodology uh, at this point, sounds like more like buying time methodology of the EU because it has been three years that the enlargement is on hold. And it is on hold uh, because we are trying to restructure the process. Uh, although we all know the elephant in the room, which is the lack of political will and the EU uh, internal crisis, which are keeping on hold the enlargement process. And that um, honestly, even the old process would have been uh, good enough if uh, if the uh, uh, the entire I mean both parties the EU and Western Balkans would have been equally devoted genuinely devoted in the process, but also uh, the uh, the uh, uh, process of reporting and uh, the uh, uh, implemented reforms would have been uh, more effective. Uh, nevertheless, I'm I'm very happy that our MFAs actually agree to have these topics. It means that it is relevant for all MFAs in the region that we talk about the new methodology. It's obvious that there is a lot of confusion. If you talk to uh, political elites in the Balkans, 
Uh, of course, if uh, this is more pre uh, pressing issue, uh, maybe Serbia and, and Montenegro being halfway through the process and having to adapt to this new methodology. And then of course, those waiting uh, to actually have this methodology implemented uh, from, uh, from um, uh, let's say from A to Z. Uh, such as the North Macedonia and Albania, and then of course the case of Bosnia and Kosovo, which are even more complex, uh, because I mean the enlargement perspective for these countries is not even to be seen on the horizon. That's why in the case of Kosovo, when this new methodology has been uh, sort of proposed back in 2019, uh, it didn't even become an issue of discussion internally, and that's of course because of the fact that um, it might take years. Uh, because, I mean, I agree with Vladimir on the time frame. Uh, for instance, in, in the case of Kosovo, there is no specific time frame. Uh, it's, even, it's even less than in other countries because uh, the EU simply says that Kosovo will have this EU perspective unlocked when the circumstances allow, meaning that uh, in addition to the actual reforms, uh, uh, that Kosovo has to fulfill. There is the elephant in the room, which is the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, which basically uh, uh, opens the perspective for, for Kosovo and then of course helps Serbia to advance in the integration process. As such, uh, there were a lot of, of course, um, fears, and, and rightly so, that the new methodology is just being used to buy time, that it's not going to replace the political will. But in the case of Kosovo, it was even more complex because uh, by the time that Kosovo will make it to the stage that probably now uh, uh, North Macedonia or, or um, uh, and Albania are, uh, there might be Western Balkan countries already part of it. Uh, so if uh, one country can simply block uh, the entire process, uh, then of course it is evident that the Serbia being already part of the EU would already be and become an obstacle for Kosovo to, to advance in, in, the, in the unification process. And this is something that, of course, would have to be uh, discussed later on. But judging by what is happening now with uh, Bulgaria, North Macedonia, it is very likely that all Western Balkan countries would have an issue with each other uh, at, at the later stage. And this would be probably uh, would have more impact on Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo given the fact that it will be the last one uh, to actually enter this process. So um, now the debate on new methodology is again distant. Uh, we are focusing on European reform agenda, on the implementation of the SAA, uh, not really expecting anything, not that North Macedonia and Albania are expecting at this point. The frustration is so, uh, it has done like so much damage that at, at this point, I think we all uh, gave up. Uh, but uh, uh, there is no expectations that uh, this, uh, this change of methodology will in a way directly impact in the, in the short run, the process of uh, integration in Kosovo, whatever that means. Uh, on the uh, second part, uh, I mean, the regional cooperation paper, uh, for me, I think it was, it was uh, easier in a way to navigate the equally complex to actually uh, make the case uh, for Kosovo, given the fact that uh, uh, we are the only country that is not recognized uh, in the region, uh, the case of Serbia and of course Bosnia and Herzegovina not recognized in Kosovo, but also among the EU member states being the five non-recognizers. And, uh, and, and those are a lot of obstacles. Not as much though in the regional uh, cooperation uh, um, uh, mechanisms. Uh, for Kosovo, all this journey in a way started in 2008, but uh, uh, it is uh, complex because Kosovo has become part of, uh, for instance, many regional initiatives even before declaring independence. And this is a case, for instance, of SEFTA, in which Kosovo became part of in 2007, being represented by UNMIC and today, still Kosovo remains represented by UNMIC. And I started with SEFTA because this is also the issue that is becoming a hot topic now uh, between Kosovo, the SEFTA members, and then of course the EU, because Kosovo is persistent that uh, it is about the time to change uh, uh, this setting, that Kosovo should be represented you know, as Kosovo uh, and not uh, through UNMIC in SEFTA, but uh, this is of course a process that is uh, on hold and that is uh, still a subject to, to uh, discussion. Um, the 
The case of Kosovo in regional cooperation has been way much more complex in a way that uh, uh, for Kosovo, it did not represent only like a, a, a platform in which uh, Kosovo benefits from different projects, be it uh, connectivity or regional cooperation in the economic uh, sector or uh, so on. But for Kosovo, it was all, already a very good platform to uh, be present uh, because uh, of, of the lack of communication with Serbia and with Bosnia, regional cooperation platforms would be the best way for Kosovo to actually be present, be part of the initiatives, uh, communicate with these countries and try to uh, 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 maximize benefits for its own citizens as much as possible. So it was in a way a bypass of uh, bilateral issues and, and uh, by making this presence in the regional uh, uh, cooperation mechanisms. Although this wasn't very easy. In 2008, everything uh, sort of became a problem and then Kosovo started making its own case uh, uh, to participate in the regional cooperation platforms. If you see the footnote in, 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 in the regional, in, in this paper, it really shows how uh, Kosovo navigated uh, uh, through this journey. Uh, the regional representation of Kosovo has been discussed in Brussels. Uh, in the framework of the Kosovo Serbia dialogue. Uh, so in 2012, we signed an agreement with Serbia, which basically is called the footnote agreement, uh, but it's uh, the agreement on regional representation of Kosovo, uh, which basically uh, states that this designation is without indigenous positions on status and it's uh, in line with UN Security Council uh, 1244 resolution and uh, this regards the ICJ opinion of Kosovo's independence. So basically this was the only way that Serbia would accept the presence of Kosovo in, in regional platforms. Uh, since we signed this agreement, basically uh, Kosovo has made it to all regional, almost all regional cooperation initiatives. Not in not all of them, Kosovo is a full-fledged member so with, uh, with rights, uh, uh, with uh, full rights. Uh, but in some, there, there is a status of, of uh, observation or or um, or uh, uh, different uh, types of of um, of, um, of presence. Let's say, um, of course, uh, without having all this uh, all this um, uh, obstacles, I think uh, to this uh, date. Uh, for them, process has been the most successful initiative in which Kosovo, through which Kosovo penetrated in this uh, regional cooperation uh, initiative. I think it's mostly because it, it's the like Berlin process it was initiated in, in, in Berlin and Kosovo was even in, in some cases was even represented without the footnote because it depended on the member states, on the hosting countries. Uh, but of course the Berlin process is coming to an end. I think one of the biggest um, uh, uh, failure of the process of, of this structure was the fact that it, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel, while exiting, she was really trying to make Kosovo and Bosnia sign the freedom of, uh, of movement agreement with each other. There were like uh, uh, experts working at the MF, respective MFAs for years, trying to come up with modality and try to make this, uh, uh, this agreement be signed last year uh, around the July, and this did not take place, unfortunately. Uh, and now, of course, is the elephant in the room, the fact that uh, there is a, another initiative, Open Balkans, in which Kosovo is uh, clearly, openly hesitating to be part of. Uh, of course, this is not causing problem just among the regional countries, but uh, also between Kosovo and Albania, as I state also in, uh, in the paper, uh, there are a lot of frictions between Arvin Kuti, the current prime minister of Kosovo and Edi Rama uh, in Albania. And this is particularly in relation to uh, the reluctancy of Kosovo to join Open Balkans and, um, and, uh, and uh, Albania being one of the countries actually pushing uh, towards this, uh, this modality of, of cooperation. Uh, so far, uh, of course, Kosovo has a new government, which still needs to adjust and still understand regional cooperation challenges uh, in the Balkans. Uh, and uh, uh, in this line, uh, uh, Prime Minister Kuti has uh, come up with his idea of regional cooperation. So instead of SEPTA, we'll have 
uh, SACTA with an S, not with a C, which will be more uh, including, uh, inclusive in terms of the number of countries, meaning the Southeast Europe would be included and not just the countries that are now in the Western Balkans plus Moldova. Uh, of course, this has been uh, not taken into consideration so far because we already have a lot of uh, overlapping initiatives in the Balkans, and this would be just another one which would be more of a burden in terms of bureaucracy, but not necessarily bringing added values to already existing initiatives. Okay. Sorry for taking a while. Yeah, thank you. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's always good to see the national perspective on different issues. So now I would like to ask Alba uh, Chalai, the director of Albanian issues for international relations, to present the comments from Albania, which is like, first of all, really engaged in my <laughs> cooperation with the Open Balkans, for example, and second, still waiting to implement the, the new methodology. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Marta, and thank you for all your colleagues here for being wonderful hosts this event. Since this is the wrapping up event, I'd like to first say on behalf of <clears throat> the Albanian Institute that we are really happy that our network is strengthened that we have a perspective for a second stage of consolidation, and we are committed to further both the network and these new models of working together, be it in research, but also in our capacity building activities and, and advocacy. And I think uh, I have mentioned this as a joke in the press platform that we serve to each other sometimes as group therapy, but in these difficult conditions of stagnant integration, of dynamic, a regional cooperation and by dynamic sometimes we mean also problematic. I think it's really important that like-minded people find ways to work together. Um, I myself was more involved with the paper on the long paper of the new methodology, which I believe my colleagues really explained to a lot of extent. So I, I won't take much time from the audience just to present two or three unique things for Albania. What we try to focus on was this initial difference that now is forgotten because so many things happened but in the beginning was very important that when we got this green light Albania got this long list of preconditions because it was not the, the best student in the class it has still so many homework to do and uh, it was different from the case of North Macedonia which didn't get this list and in, in that time this was such a big thing and uh, and now later we see that that didn't make such a difference. But uh, it's interesting to see that in those <coughs> negotiation framework that we analyzed, this kind of mentality comes back. So all those preconditions that were set for Albania, in a way or another, are grouped according to the logic of the clusters and are still there. So that kind of list, which to be fair, originated in the German parliament and then was enriched by some certain extra requests from other EU member states, still constitutes, let's say, the basic conditionality for Albania, no matter what happens. We all want, we said it all of us here, that this new methodology now is a tool that is getting rusty because it's not being used. And if it gets rusty enough, it will be not functioning anymore. And really, it needs a chance. And I think countries like France should push a lot more for it because they were the ones asking for it. And now they really need to put it in use. And now this French presidency might be an opportunity for that. Uh, but for us, it was interesting to see how these conditions and how the processes that are ongoing in Albania connect to the new methodology. And we saw actually uh, some positive connection, for example, because of this radical justice reform undertaken in Albania that is still going on and it's very difficult and there's a lot of troubles connected to it, but within it, there is a huge potential to carry on with this fundamental cluster and to record real progress in relatively short time. So if a chance had been given with the, with the opening of the negotiations, the facto, then we could have seen this new methodology even work in a certain sense to, to promote the, the case of Albania, at least in this side. Also, imp very important uh, bilateral issues, moments of veto are really, really crucial. 
And uh, I've always said this is not just North Macedonia, it's any country that can suffer this from one moment or the other. I'll just mention to you that, uh, that Albania still has a long list of unresolved bilateral issues with Greece, which are also featured in the draft negotiating framework, and which now are at least agreed to be solved by an international uh, court of justice at The Hague. Um, I think what Vladimir mentioned about the third actors is really important. We are sadly, or maybe not so sadly, because they're still pushing for the reforms. For example, in Albania, seeing the United States be much more invested in pushing with the justice reform, which was actually one of the key reforms for European integration. And this is really a case for the EU to to take ownership and to be much more active in promoting it. Mm -hmm. My final comment would be on the regional cooperation, though I was not uh, an author of it, but really the increase of local ownership is, is really important. I mean, this is since 2013 that uh, we are doing studies and the conclusions are certainly the same. We need more resources, we need more trained people, we need more local ownership. It seems that the number of initiatives goes up, but the, the capacities devoted to them remain the same, and so they get divided, so that each of them then gets less. So just on a concluding note, I think we have reached this year, which we have we have disappointment. And if I mentioned the word, even it feels like sometimes you want to give up. We have a lot of accumulated disappointment, but I think we should just like squeeze our fingers and really give final push with the lobbying, with advocacy, because it still remains like a, the most strategic plan for our region. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Alba, for your comments and being the optimist <laughs> at the end. Yeah, we all hope for the best. And now I would like to ask Nicola Mumin, Executive Director for of political network to, to join us. Uh, Nicola was supposed to be here, but you know the, the connectivity because uh, between both regions is really good during the summer season. We have a lot of tourists going to the Western Balkans and coming uh, to the V4. But during the winter time, it's really hard and challenging. So due to the problems at the Istanbul airport, Nicola, can be with us today, so but we are glad that you can join us online. Nicola, the floor is yours. Well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Marta. Uh, I would like to uh, greet everyone and uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity uh, to to speak uh, at uh, at this uh, wrap up <coughs> event. Um, I'm very, uh, very humbled to be uh, in the presence uh, of uh, much more experienced colleagues uh, and uh, I've heard many, <coughs> uh, many interesting uh, points. Uh, so uh, I would, I would like now to uh, add uh, some of my own, uh, both on the, both on the new methodology and both, uh, both on the, uh, on the perspective of uh, regional cooperation. Uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the political will, uh, which is uh, like which is the prime uh, prime element uh, of of the new methodology, uh, as uh, Vladimir mentioned, uh, it uh, demands social change, societal change uh, from the side of the negotiating country. And uh, in the case of Montenegro, it's uh, the adoption of new methodology. Uh, luckily, or however, uh, wh whatever is your perspective on it, coincided with uh, uh, with the first change of government in Montenegro after thirty years. So it was kind of uh, so it was kind of starting to become uh, a new uh, a new process uh, on itself. Um, when it uh, when it comes to the second element of uh, of dynamism, I think uh, that it doesn't apply so much on Montenegro uh, because Montenegro has uh, already opened uh, all chapters uh, of the negotiations and temporarily uh, closed uh, three of them. Uh, and uh, so the dynamism element uh, doesn't really apply for Montenegro because it has already 
uh, opened uh, all chapters of negotiations. When it comes to the element of phasing in, as uh, most of you said, it's very uh, it's very uh, unclearly defined. It doesn't. Um, I mean, we know what it means essentially, but there are no uh, clear uh, instructions and uh, methods of how it, how it would be uh, implemented. And of course, uh, the issue of, uh, of capacity, Montenegro had, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, a co uh, the, implement, uh, the adoption of new methodology uh, actually coincided uh, some, somewhat with, uh, with the change of government. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of restructuring uh, in, the, in the work groups. Uh, which are uh, which are working uh, on the on the negotiations. Um, so I think uh, what the new methodology presents uh, for Montenegro, uh, if if uh, if it if it can be um, implemented in the way it was uh, envisioned to be implemented. Uh, it may result in more focused reforms it, and it may uh, accelerate the process, but of course, um, the political will also uh, depends on the country which is negotiating and Montenegro now is in a bit of a po political turmoil. Uh, uh, there's there are a couple of uh, different initiatives for restructuring of the government, uh, new elections uh, and uh, or even a, a, com a complete uh, restructuring or technical government. Uh, so uh, uh, the process is uh, is in is in is in the background of all those internal uh, political events. So I think after we have a resolution of the current situation, that uh, maybe it will be easier easier to talk about this. Um, when it when it comes to uh, regional cooperation, uh, the question of uh, open Balkans initiative remains uh, remains open in Montenegro. But uh, uh, this is uh, this is of course uh, because of uh, many uh, coinciding initiatives happening at the same time in the in the region of of Western Balkans. But it's, it uh, essentially can come down uh, to Montenegro for uh, the lack of its economic power uh, or the need for uh, internal economic reforms. So it can actually be uh, a, competitive, uh, a competitive market, not only, uh, not only in the area of uh, Western Balkans, but in the, in the area of Europe. Uh, so... <clears throat> So I would like uh, to now uh, come back. I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, prolong my uh, my speech. So uh, I would like to come back to uh, the process itself. So I think it was Jacques Delors who said that, uh, who compared the integration process with riding a bike. He said, if you, if you stop, you're going to fall. The question is, uh, has the process stopped? Or uh, is it going uh, in a in a really, uh, really slow pace. And I think uh, that uh, we're gonna, going to have um, a much more clear perspective uh, on, on the regional, on the process of European integration at the end of 2002, because in, uh, in perspective, it looks to be uh, a quite interesting year when it comes to uh, geopolitics. And when it comes to the European Union and uh, Western Western Balkan itself, it's probably going to be uh, a very uh, a very exciting year because of the implementation of the of the recovery plan uh, in the European Union, and of course uh, start of uh, the implementation of economic and investment plan for the for the Western Balkans. Uh, but uh, to keep uh, uh, to to keep this on a more uh, optimistic note, I uh, well Montenegro well predictions uh, that uh, the main negotiator has uh, stated 
recently is that Montenegro will uh, close the process by 2025. It will still be uh, the longest negotiation process, but uh, I think with uh, with more political will from inside uh, the country itself and outside, I think it may be feasible not to become a member, of course, but uh, to finalize uh, finalize negotiations. Thank you. Thank you very, uh, very much, Nicola, for this optimistic prediction <laughs> at the end. Uh, there were a lot of comments about the clear perspective and political commitment about political will. So <coughs> I, I must assure you that in the leadership of countries, we have this, we have this commitment, we have this political will, we, we, uh, we support uh, quick, pro pro uh, quick pro process and we know to have uh, to, to, to presentation of clear perspective for the Western Balkan countries, because of course, our integration process was always, it is frequently, um, uh, um, you know, uh, it is fre fre frequently when we are speaking about why the Atlantic was so, so successful in the case of Central Europe, and you know, it is so problematic in the case of Western Balkans. This is the time frame also, which is important. So our negotiation lasted for three years, and we became a, a member you know, in the decade after, you know, thinking about the membership. So when we compare it with Macedonia, which gained the candidacy status in 2005, we see that, you know, for the process to be effective, it has to have the clear time perspective and time frame. You know, it's not about, yeah, as you said, the process, but also about the goal. Now, we also mentioned the, the issue of capacity. So we had our projects, like the, the main aim of our project is to, uh, to develop this kind of capacity um, to support the MFA, respective the MFA in implementing the, the EU policy in presenting or developing the, the position towards the, the EU proposals um, for the Western Balkans uh, to also develop the local ownership uh, of the process, capacities in the uh, in the region, so, so we hope that we will continue with that, with the clear support from the uh, before countries. At the end, I would like to thank all the uh, participants in our network, all the participants of our project, the partner organization, the Institute for Democracy, for Democracy, Sociedad Civilis, who are the project coordination who made us to this challenging time. I would like also uh, to, to thank Anna Maria, which is in the back always, <laughs> but you know, it's thanks to her we are here. And you know, it was really challenging to implement this, this project in the time of COVID. You know, um, uh, like quarantines, uh, lockdowns, which were implemented, and you know, all of adjustment creates a lot of work which were not on us but on Ana Maria so thank you <laughs> sorry for all the problems <laughs> because during the during the process and we do hope we will meet soon uh, you know with new year recommendation new, new ideas for regional cooperation how to support the Latin process of the Western Balkans thank you very much for listening and you know for participating in all the other meetings we have um, during this last, last year, actually, it was in 2022, <laughs> but yeah. Thank you very much. And bye, bye. see you soon. Bye, everyone. In person, hopefully. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. bye.